She needs no introduction, but she does want to introduce her book. And don't you go anywhere. This is going to be a fun show. The former attorney general and talk show host, my former rival and now friend, Arlene Violet, is my guest tonight. And I'm really happy to have her. She's co-authored a book which tells a story that might be a reality check for a lot of us who perhaps have romanticized I don't know that Vietnam is romanticized, but it's maybe even worse than uh, one originally thought. By the way, you know, on Friday nights, don't tell anybody, but we're not working Fridays. We produce our programs for Friday on Thursday night. Thus, we don't do our rundown because it wouldn't be timely, right? You can do the math on that. It gives us more time to kind of share some thoughts with our guests. And so we make some productive use of that time. Here's the introduction, if you will to the conversation. Billy Reynolds reviewed the book, and if Billy likes it, I like it. Uh, Dance of the Chameleon, An American Tragedy is the name of the book, and the co-author, you'll meet the other co-author uh, coming up in just a minute, but I want to spend some time with Arlene. Welcome, my friend. How are you? Thank you. We were friends when we were rivals, we were. too, remember? I'm kidding. But, yeah, you know, you know it, I miss you in the business because, you know, just like selling hamburgers, one and one makes four, mm -hmm. right? And sure. so having, having... Raises ha everybody's game. Yeah, having your voice... Uh, out of the mix on a daily basis um, is is a loss, and you and I could talk about the broadcast business all day long. But tell me, how you been? How you doing? Just I mean, great. it's not like you're it's not like you're MIA. You appear on public TV. I'd like to have you here more on the issues. You know, um, you're writing a column. I read in the Valley Breeze Weekly. Yeah, yeah. Um, what it's else are you the, doing? Well, it's in the East Bay newspaper group. Okay. Uh, as well, uh, legal wise, I still uh, do wills, trust, probate. Consult oh, with still, my clients. Still, you still got billable hours. Huh? I still have billable hours oh, okay. because I have clients who still want to talk to me, which is nice. Right. Uh, and then um, I just sent out uh, my musical that I wrote with Enrico Gazzelli, The Family, a mob musical. Another producer expressed interest. So just today, when we're filming, he's got it in his hands right now along wow. with the music. So we're still trying to push that to Broadway. Uh, I'm a trustee at Roger Williams University, so I usually have about three meetings a week associated with that because I'm on the committee where I have to put the arm on people, right, the advancement committee chair. So uh, very busy, too busy sometimes, but but I also love, of course, doing this book with James Squadrito, Dance of the uh, Chameleon, because it's just a fascinating story he's got to tell Dan. All right, I want to I wanna spend some time on that. Tell me, do you, do you miss um, the daily rigor of doing a radio show? Not really. Uh, every once in a while I will, but the only reason why is because I feel that nobody covered it. But the present talk sh show hosts are doing such a great job covering all aspects well, of it. Well, I don't I feel that. that a point of view is missing, so, you know. And so, you know, from my perspective, I really don't miss it because I think the issues are getting aired. I can't not ask uh, what you think the state of the state is right now. Boy. You know, I, I'm just worried, period, uh, not just obviously for the state of Rhode Island. Uh, you know, the pension system is really not doing well, despite all those sacrifices that the pensioners have to make. But I think we're in a dangerous time, you know, where insults uh, get uh, mixed up with uh, by politicians, that that's telling the story straight. Uh, the political correctness, thank God, it doesn't invade Roger Williams University, not yet. Thank God, but you know you have to have trigger warnings, and uh, you can't assign me a book that might cause me emotional distress on, on university campuses where the free exchange of ideas is supposed to be uh, over and over uh, exchanged and not be worried about people with opposing views. So I just think we're going into a very recessive uh, period of time, both intellectually uh, as well as uh, uh, financially. You're talking about uh, the big picture in America, In America, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about our great state? Well, the great state, again, you know, there are many, many problems. You know, I know uh, the governor's, you know, trying her best, but, you know, she's got to be much more transparent. Uh, I want to credit you with the idea uh, that she uh, had an exit strategy when that unfound $1.1 billion came into the state that Jack Reed found. She could have retired gracefully saying, we've got the money now. I don't have to put uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of pay interest burden on you. What are we, like fourth or something, mm -hmm. or seventh in the country in terms of bonded indebtedness? 
Uh, but she didn't take it. And I, I don't know who's advising her, Dan, but you know, she's not going the right way, particularly on transparency issues and these that, kind it, of big it, issues. This notion of transparency, and only a couple minutes on this, and then I want to get to the book because it's fascinating. It is disheartening to folks like you and me who think that maybe there's a diamond in the rough coming out of the political class, right, the, the political right. group. We don't want to be banging on elected officials all the time. Heck, you were one. It is the, it's the oil that runs the engine of the democracy, right? So you want to lift people up who show some kind of promise that there'll be different types. And so a treasurer creates pension reform, albeit not perfect, but looks like a change agent, and then ends up becoming a governor. And while she is doing some good things out there, she's kind of shut the closet on understanding what's going on behind the... And, yeah. and, and you think, how does that happen? How do you turn into that kind of disposition in just a few months? Yeah, it's a, it's a managed message all the time. It's yeah. where you're only going to hear about the good stuff, Rhode Islanders, and none of uh, you're not going to get to see how the sausage is made. Sometimes the sausage doesn't come out right either. Right. But uh, I, I'm really very disappointed on the lack of transparency by the governor. All right. Um, give me a tidbit on the book, Dance of the Chameleon, and then we'll uh, meet uh, the guy you did the project with. Yeah, well, uh, as uh, Mr. Reynolds, Bill Reynolds in the Prominence Journal said, it's a forceful book. It's a kick uh, in the gut. And it really is. This is a book that chronicles Jim Squadrito's journey from a frat boy, top god at Bryant, uh, college at that time, getting drafted into the service, going unprepared as a medic into three different areas in Vietnam, and seeing behavior among the troops and how the troops treated the Vietnamese, uh, the, how soldiers would kill each other because of the black-white conflict being played out in Vietnam, girls ages 13, 14, uh, going on base to service the soldiers with the countenance of our government. It would be statutory rape here if they did that. So, uh, giving guns for heroin to the villagers who were being given heroin by the Viet Cong. The soldiers were so addicted and then those rifles were being used to kill our troops. Uh, it, it's, it's a blistering story. I call it a little book with a big wallop. But it's his journey through all of that. And he wrote it because he wanted people to heal. He was part of sometimes the problem. He also was part of the solution, as many soldiers were, because bravery also accompanied some shameful acts. The book chronicles that, and also his journey of discovery into becoming the man he is today. All right, well, how's that for a trained introduction? You're good. Maybe you <laughs> should do some broadcast work. <laughs> when we come back, the guy in the book, stay with us. <laughs> So here is the book, again, that uh, Arlene so eloquently introduced in the last segment, and now we meet the guy that, uh, let, me, let me clear this up. There's a co-author, there's an author, you, you wrote it, you touched it up. How does a co-author, welcome, Jim. Nice well, to have thank you. you. <laughs> Good Jim's to be here. with us. Uh, how, how does that whole dynamic work? Well, we co-wrote it. Jim, as soon as he got out of the service, right, did 40 yeah. pages of notes to, to refresh his memory, and... Yeah, over, over 40 years ago when I came back, um, uh, I had a touch of PTSD. I had rashes from head to toe, so, and I was depressed, uh, borderline suicidal. And a therapist said, look, why don't you just get it off your chest and write some of the things you saw. So over 40 years ago, I wrote all these pages, 40-something pages, notes here, this and there, and I, I put it in the bottom of a file cabinet. And it was in there for over 40 years. Did you feel better after the exercise? I did. Was it, was it a, good, a good remedy for the diagnosis? Yeah, it, it, it got some of the things. I, was, I felt guilty in some of the things I did there. And you'll see in the book, uh, The Dance of the Chameleon, that, that it, I felt guilt, uh, as mo a lot of the GIs did. Um, so I got it off my chest and wrote it. And then I, uh, I met Arlene through a couple of boards that we were on and she asked me one day a couple of years ago have you ever wrote anything and i said well i did over 40 years ago right she says so well, if you can find it i'd like to read it i'd like to read stuff like that what, what what have you been doing for a living since you got back from vietnam yeah. uh funny story i guess <laughs> uh, when i came back i probably went through 10 or 12 jobs couldn't keep a job um they didn't like us very well, Vietnam veterans. If you Just an you. ugly time yeah. in our history, it, isn't it? It, it? it was very ugly. And I got a big break in my life after about 12 years. Uh, uh, during the blizzard of 78, I was all alone in an apartment. 
a friend of mine let me live there. He's ready to throw me out. And two individuals in the snow asked me to use the phone. They came upstairs. Uh, they asked me what I did. I said, I'm, I'm without a job. I said, I've been through 10 or 12. I can't keep a job. I can't focus. And the guy said, look, I want you to go to this address in two weeks. And they left. And in two weeks, I didn't have a car or anything. I didn't even want to go. I decided something inside of me said go. And I hitchhiked 40 miles to an interview. There were 50 people in there for one job. And people in there were much, all kinds of experience in sales. I brought, I went into the interview about 40th. Two guys were sitting there. I gave them my application. They looked at it. They said, so you're Squadrito? I said, yeah. They said, when can you start? I said, when can I start? I said, I'm here for an interview. They said, when the executive vice president of 3M company tells us to hire somebody, we do. Wow. One of the guys in the snow. Thank and you, Blizzard of 78. And that, <laughs> right. and that, and that, that is turned, such an incredible human and story. And turned my life around. And, uh, you know, I went through some battles in, in you know, when I uh, was employed. I had to work hard. And uh, uh, it just was a knack for me in the sales. So, so Dance of the Chameleon means what? Dance of the Chameleon is the, is, is the changes in the colors of your life. And through, through my life, I had to do some dancing, you know, sidestep. And, uh, you know, as I only uh, said, I was a spoiled frat boy. I, I was on basketball scholarship at uh, Bryant University. I was captain of the team, and I thought I had it made. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm 21 years old, and I'm in, uh, you know, the front lines of Vietnam. And it was a growing experience for me and, and changed me. Uh, I grew up. It was not a good situation for me, but it, it made me what I am today. So when, you know, I don't have the, the proper definition of chameleon in front of me. I didn't think to look it up. But, mm -hmm. you know, when I say somebody's a chameleon, it's somebody who's, well, you could use all sorts of words, someone who's faking it, phony, perhaps look showing to be somebody and ends up being somebody very different. I think that's at least a ballpark definition, correct? Well, I think the stories and illustrate. In Dance of the Chameleon, you'll find all of that. So you were somebody, but you were really somebody else. Right. And I'm guessing you were multiple somebodies and multiple somebodies else, if I understand the gist of the story. Yeah, right. And how many of those somebodies did you like being? I didn't, want, I didn't like being myself. Hmm. So anybody else I could be, I felt good. It's a spiritual journey. Uh, I, at the end, you know, I straighten out my life. That's why it's important, I think, for not only veterans, but anybody to read this, uh, because uh, it shows you that somebody who's down in the dumps can pick themselves up. And uh, I was as low as you could get. Uh, there are things in here, and I've been able to read excerpts, I just, and I mean this kind of, and just go. Wow. There's, uh, well, really? stuff that went on, Arlene alluded to it in the first segment. Okay. I mean, none of us have a Pollyanna view of Vietnam, but this is yep. beyond, yep. right? And the only reason I saw all this is I was in three venues in Vietnam. Normally, uh, when you're sent to Vietnam, you stay with one unit and that's it. Uh, I was a combat medic. And they sent me into uh, 1st Infantry Division and uh, where I was... Uh, First, uh, first line aid uh, choppers were coming in. We had to take bodies off the choppers, and, and if we could save them, fine. If not, we, you know, we had to put them in body bags. I mean, that was the. And the first infantry division was disbanding, and they needed medics up on the DMZ. Uh, six of them were killed in like a couple of months, and they chose me to go up to the DMZ. So I spent time on the demilitarized zone, uh, where. Uh, the North Vietnamese was sneaking under the wire, and uh, I had to go on uh, mine patrol every morning. Spent time out there, and then at the end, they sent me back to another post. So I saw three different areas of Vietnam, and three different, uh, uh, there were different events happening in every area, different experiences. But some uh, common experiences yeah. which made their way into the book, and uh, Dance the Chameleon, is so brutally honest, Dan, uh, because he feels that you have to confront what you did. And if you did dishonorable things as a soldier, part of your healing is to confront that, but also to confront the heroic things that you yep. did. And that's what this book is. It's a mixture of, of the bad 
but also the good and the heroic yeah. things that went on there, and that's what led to his spiritual journey back. Is that is it that you couldn't you couldn't give yourself credit for the things you did well unless you took ownership for the things you did poorly? Correct. Yeah. And many soldiers now, particularly from that war, when they come back, and then people feed them that they're no good. They he'll tell you his experience getting off the plane here at TF Green Airport. Uh, they begin to internalize it, and then if you had some things in your past that weren't good, you even begin to believe more that you're worthless unless you confront that, and that's what led him to write The Answer of the Chameleon. All right, so clearly this book is part psychotherapy, and uh, that shouldn't be minimized. What Jim wants to tell you, more about the book when we come back, and where you can get it, of course. Stay tuned. <coughs> The book is called Dance of the Chameleon. By the way, I don't do books. Uh, we don't do a lot of books around here. I don't do books on the radio. I don't do books on television. But I guess I just did Dance of the Chameleon. It's Arlene, for crying out loud. I, mean, I was going to say, I mean, well, I was going to say, you know, you know, it's just a guy getting me. Of course. But you know what? I, I, when, when there are local projects that, that um, certainly would, ha I think, have a chance to have a national significance, yes, it does. Um, you can hardly, hardly say no, and I'm actually enthusiastic to, to help support this. Uh, the business model for this book, by the way, you can, I know that we've been supering where you can get this book, uh, barnesandnoble.com. Uh, you've got a couple before, I don't want to, I want to make sure that we don't miss that you're going to do some book signings. You've actually had a few today already, but in uh, the future. Uh, 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, near Gansett Pier at uh, Curiosity and Mischief. Uh, that, of course, is down at the pier, right across from Narragansett at the beach, that bookstore. What day? Uh, on Saturday, this Saturday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Right. And uh, then Books on the Square, January 7th, uh, are two others that we have set up right now. Okay. Barrington. And the Barrington yeah. Bookstore tomorrow. Right. Well, actually, you're, 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 you're getting confused because we're doing this on Friday. Oh, we, yeah. we had it going. We had it figured. We're the broadcasters. Oh. We can do that stuff. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, just um, and are you? Is it going to be available? Is it going to be a web website developed for this book uh, and all that kind of stuff? We haven't yet, but it's available at Amazon. It's a Kindle book. You know, an e-book as okay. well. You can download it from Barnes and Noble. Are you, are you are you expecting that um, this is going to be a national conversation? the story that's told here? Do you want it to be? We want it to be, and we think it should be. Uh, only heaven will know whether it develops that way, but it deserves a national conversation, Dan, just as you point out. Initially, I never talked about Vietnam. Uh, a only, lot of guys don't. No, and I didn't for 40-something years. Uh, I, I just want, if this helps any returning vets to put their lives back on track, that would be all I would want out of this book. Um, and I've already had a lot of people telling me that they have spiritually gotten into this book. Yeah. Give me, without fleshing out the whole thing, because you need to read the book to, to get the whole gist, but give me the worst part of the story that you tell. Uh, What's I, the worst thing in I, here? I the thing you're so sorry for or... or you fill in the blanks. Well, I think the worst part, I mean, I, the, Arlene talked about the, the young children, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, you, being used as prostitutes out there. And, but in, in that culture, they also have children at that age, you know. Uh, but I think the biggest thing to me was watching GIs uh, die of drug overdoses. It, the, the heroin addiction down there was, was awful. And guys would do anything to get a fix. And they were buying it uh, on the uh, black market uh, and it was, it was mixed with battery acid. And these guys were shooting it up and dying and their families back home would get a notice that they were killed in action. When in, and we don't use the real names of people in there. But some people at home think their, their son or daughter was killed in action when they were you know, overdosed on battery acid heroin. Has, has, has we had a national conversation about that? I, I think not. I think uh, I would like to see this book, uh, Dance of the Chameleon, actually start that national conversation because we need that kind of reconciliation. And Dan, there's a lot in that book, I think, that pertains to men and women returning from other wars as well because what you see is very difficult just on its own to get over, let alone some of the horrors that uh, you get to witness in those wars. What's the best thing that comes out of this for you? 
I think the best the best thing that, that came out of that book for me is that um, I developed an inner spirit with myself in seeing the things that I did. Um, when I came back, uh, I went through some, in the book, the, the answer to communion, you'll see that I went through a spiritual journey. Um, and people probably wouldn't uh, believe this, but I, I, I was visited by spirits. And spirits guided me in a lot of instances in there. So I feel closer to myself spiritually. His guardian angels, yeah. he says he has. Yeah. The incidents is very interesting yeah. stories. The disbelievers of guardian angels. Identifiable? Spiritual. Spiritual. Um, Saved uh, his troops from being yeah, blown a up of times. a couple of times because of that. Uh, what he saw was telling them, don't go down that road. So there's some power in this project. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a song, you say. Uh, when I... In in the middle of the night, a song came to me in the middle of the night. I don't read music. I don't write music. I do sing. Uh, but in the middle of the night, the song came to me. Give us uh, a little sample. Would you like to hear some? Yeah, real quick. Cool. Had a couple minutes. And my wife wrote the words and music. I mean, the music to this. Okay. It's called Hero. And it Go ahead. kind Go of ahead. essence of the whole book. <clears throat> I thought I was a hero. Cause people told me so The crowd would cheer me on I shine from head to toe mm -hmm. My life was filled with parties All night and through the day I had my choice of ladies They all came my way mm -hmm. Hero, hero Walking proud and strong, hero, hero, where do you belong? Mm -hmm. Somewhere across the ocean, a war was raging on. I heard from Richard Nixon, you're joining us in Nam. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab that from you only because we're out of time. If you want to hear in your own ears, the rest of the song. It's right here in the book, Dance of the Chameleon. Um, I wish the best of luck with this project. Uh, I, I, for some reason, having looked at some of the excerpts, or, or uh, excerpting myself, uh, and having not yet read it, but instinctively, I think we can hear a national platform for this conversation, and I wish the best of luck Thank with you, that. Thank you, Dan. Merry um, Christmas to you. Merry Thank Christmas you for to us. you. Thank you. Thanks for your service. Thank you. Appreciate it. Despite the ups and downs, it's uh, it's something that we don't say enough, especially to our Vietnam vets. Uh, final word when we come back. Stay with us. Well, the program notes for this Friday evening, a little day off on Monday. Hey, it's my wedding anniversary. 25 years. Can you believe that? Who would hang around with me for 25 years? Um, but we'll revisit our conversation with um, some of our Muslim community leaders and better understanding of Islam in the middle of all the news cycle. I think it's a good idea. I hope you will check into that. On Tuesday of next week, Susan Hogan, who I hate to break it to you, is exiting Channel 12. She'll have her exit interview right here on the Dan York State of Mind program. This Dance of a Chameleon project seems to me to be something that is going to be a national conversation. Um, get the book. Read the book. And uh, we'll have them on the radio at some juncture to talk about it. i got to get out of here. Take care. Bye-bye.